You know, I'm amazed you haven't slowed down any given the cracked ribs. I keeping moving is keeping my mind off them. You ever cracked a rib before? Once. That's why I'm amazed. How are those scrapes on your arm? Your first mate said they were healing up fine when he changed the bandages. Sira did a good job. My face bled like anything, but head wounds always do. Looks a lot worse than it is. So, speaking of things you're not paying attention to, do you want to talk about it, now that we're all the way out here? Talk about what? So, Vonda, mate, what in oblivion was Miff talking about? He's your brother. I... Look, I don't... This is as much news to me as it likely was to him. We've got more important business besides. I just need more time to... Work this out to say nothing of heal, and that's... It'll take as long as it takes. I can't promise I'll be patient with myself, so don't ask me to. I won't. But you can work on it out loud if you want. You met Woolly and Jameson, you know I don't mind a bit of rambling. Not that you do much of that, mister. Doesn't lack like small talk. <laughs> don't make me laugh. Honestly, not sure what there is to be said about that yet. Not sure, eh? How about... Why'd you just storm off like that? It was getting late and... I wouldn't know what to say to him, either. It's not every day someone's brother comes crawling out of the stonework. Which is why I think I speak for all of us when I say I'm surprised you didn't even stay to chat. What's going on in that noggin of yours, soul? You angry? Afraid? Too confused to look him in the eye? Trying to give this business its full time to sink in. Meditating on it, I suppose. It's a rhetoric thing, if that explains any of his brooding. Something about gravity, whatever that's supposed to mean. Good morning, by the way. Nobody got stabbed overnight. Morning? Glad to hear it. Morning, Cactus. And, uh, gravity in this context means I take matters seriously. And... This matter in particular is a serious one. There's a part of me wondering if Myth is just a better actor than I'm used to dealing with. If that shock on his face was just... something he put on to make me trust him more. I don't know what he wants. Why'd he come out and drop that on everyone out of nowhere? Ah, oh, I see, and I didn't break your paranoid streak too. <laughs> Damn it, Hatlug. What did I tell you about making me laugh? Oh, so just so we're all on the same page here, what's the deal with him? You and Cactus figured out something that I'm still wrestling with. He's not, like, Dark Brotherhood or something, is he? Oh, no. Better. He's more Agtong. And given the state of House Telvani, I'm not at all surprised we're their best customers right now. It doesn't explain what he's doing on this side of the Velothis, but he was getting rid of the competition. He what? That's what he was here for. I don't mind betraying his confidence since he betrayed me and murdered an entire loyal clan. For business. The bastard. He could have at least pretended to feel some remorse about it. The Talong doesn't deal in remorse. And let me rephrase myself. What do you mean by competition? I mean the Dark Brotherhood. I don't know what else he was here for. He implied that there was more to it than just walking into a sanctuary and gutting everyone inside, but that's what happened. At the time, I thought it was just revenge. I can relate to that part. Why do you sound like you saw it happen? Because I did. I know where the sanctuary in Falkreath is, or was. He didn't just hire me as a guide to get him out of the salt marsh. Well... That's... unusual. Aren't the Tong outlawed in the Empire? Aye, they are. And I think I know what you're thinking, Cactus. I've got some, uh, Experience with criminal organizations and competition. 
You don't get into competition with people unless you're after the same resources. Or territory. Say again. Yeah, that's a lot to remember back. Why? To paraphrase, criminal organizations wouldn't be in competition unless they're after the same resources. In this case, I assume people and contracts. And or territory. And since their territory shouldn't overlap, given that Skyrim is in fact still an imperial province... Mostly. Mostly. I can see those wheels spinning. Care to share with the crew, soul? I'm thinking he's planning something. But I can't quite nail down what yet. And I wish we'd stay to see what kind of sway Ulfric really has over Windhelm. To say nothing of figuring out what he wants out of this war of his. Besides the throne. Anna, you seem to have a finger on the pulse of this thing, so to speak. Any ideas? You are very quick to trust me given that I attacked your friend. Why do I feel like you're planning to slit my throat in my sleep? <laughs> it's just the Telvanni aura, I'm afraid. For what it's worth, it was my fault. I should know better than to go back and wild animals or people into corners. <laughs> You've learned your lesson then. Frankly, I want to move on from that little misadventure as quickly as possible. And I never said I'd trust you. I said you seem to be more aware of all of this than the rest of us. Honestly, all I know about this war is that the Stormcloaks are angry about Talos for some reason, and that the Nords don't exactly tolerate outlanders in their midst. Yes, I do recognize the irony of someone from the far side of Morrowind saying that. If you're asking why they're angry about their god, it's because the Empire outlawed worship of him for... some reason. Appeasing the elves, I think. I heard plenty of complaining about it in Markarth. No, that's the one. One of those compromises I mentioned about the white gold could call it. Do I have any idea why they'd ask for that to be a term? No, I do not, but I bet Syra does. And I'd bet, given all that, that Ulfric wants to pull Skyrim out of the Empire once he's in charge. I thought that was a given. I am a little out of touch in catching up. Bear with me. Now, pardon me if this is a dumb question, but if the Nords are fighting to get their homeland back from the Empire, surely they'd understand Enna's issue, right? They wouldn't understand the first thing about us. The Silverbloods back in Markarth are loyal to Ulfric, and they were keeping several of my people locked up in Sidna Mine, using us for labour. If the Stormcloaks make someone like Thongvor the Arl, or gods forbid Thongvor himself, they will do everything in their power to get us back underground, doing exactly what we were doing before I stopped them. And likely worse, because under Ulfric's rule, they'll be able to get away with it. When those Stormcloaks say Skyrim for the Nords, they mean only the Nords. And only the Nords that inside with the Empire. It is not the same. Goats. Shit, I'm sorry. Aye, that's what I was afraid of. Skyrim for the Nords. Warmongering Enwas. Uh, you're a rhetoric guard, soul. You're a soldier. How do you get away with calling them? There's a difference between the guards and the Stormcloaks, son. As Redoran built up a force to protect Morrowind and her people. We don't go looking for war, but we won't stand idly by if it comes to us. Granted, I have a bad habit of finding trouble for myself, but I don't do it for the sake of fighting. I do it for the sake of protecting people. If House Rhetoran ever starts a war, I'll eat my words. But right now, we hold to our duty. I apologize for insinuating otherwise in that case. Aye. It's a good thought, Soul, but you can't protect everyone. And you make a convincing argument, little miss. I, uh, think my mind's made up like it wasn't before. What, you planning to make your old smithing mentor proud and turn over a new leaf in the Legion? As a matter of fact, I'm considering it. I'm sure there's a best case scenario out there where the Stormcloaks aren't what Anna just made them out to be, but, in my experience, the best case and the worst case have about the same chance of happening. The middle ground is far more likely than either. And I don't really want to know what the middle ground is between could have been worse and forcefully kicking all non nords out of Skyrim. Or worse. You know what I mean. Oh, do I. Do I ever. 
And what would you know, wizard? You flatter me, but I'm only a retainer. Remind me to tell you sometime how House Telvani have traditionally treated, for instance, Argonians and Khajiit. I think you'll find it a bit too familiar for your liking. Fair enough. You are... very strange. Aye, oh, he's a fun one. So, we're all... or mostly agreed, then. So, you didn't much sound like you wanted to fight for the Stonecloaks. I don't. Especially not after hearing all that. I'm of a mind with you, Atlog, but I'm far less optimistic about it. Down the middle ground, I don't want to risk anything anywhere near the worst case happening. And it might. You know why? No? Why? Because my thrice-damned Morag Tong half-brother and the blasted dragonborn are gonna side with them. Azura preserved me. And that Swit. By Swit, you mean Miff. Aye. I suppose I should be appealing to my father for him instead, but something tells me she'd just be sitting back, drinking Mars tea, and enjoying the show. <laughs> do, uh... Do Daedric Princes drink? I know one in particular who definitely does. Now, I'm gonna feel like an idiot for asking this, but what makes you so sure they'll side with the Stormcloaks? I mean, I've travelled with both of them. They seem like decent people to me, and on top of that, they saved your life. They could have been manipulating everyone. And by they, really, I just mean myth manipulating everyone, including the Dragonborn. I don't know about that. I mean, you might be right, and he's definitely hiding something. He was hiding the assassin thing. I'm a slackwit sometimes. Right, I don't know. They both seem weirdly genuine now that I know that. I... I don't think... Or maybe I just hope that they're not bad people at heart. Just working at cross purposes. Maybe they'll come around eventually, but I'm not holding out hope. I'll accept that. But one's a Dunmer and the other's an Altmer. What reason would either of them have to fight for the Nords instead of, say, dealing with the dragons? Business. Ah, oh, shit. You don't mean Morag Tong business, do you? They're outlawed here. Well, I suppose he could be here with a writ for the Jarl of Windhelm. But something tells me, even with as desperate as the Tong is for any kind of long-lasting foothold right now, they wouldn't risk someone with his skills on that kind of mission, in what is, by all accounts, enemy territory. No, you're right. But they might be desperate enough to try to get Ulfric, or someone close to him, maybe, like his steward, to give them legal jurisdiction in Skyrim once the Stormcloaks are taken over. Because an independent Skyrim is not the Empire, and might be persuaded to let the Morag Tong in. You know, if what Anna says is true, that'll never work. Skyrim for the Nords and whatnot. Aye, and if what you said is true about the potential of this settling on some sort of compromise, it might. And I think they might just be desperate enough to try. And you think Syria would follow him? She hates the Thalmor and is convinced they've got the Empire by the short and curlies. Aye, I do. You both have more experience with the Empire than I do. Do they? I've got nothing substantial to back this up, but I don't think they do. Aye, if they did, they wouldn't be posturing the way they are. Granted, I could be wrong. I'd rather not be. Now the choice is perfect, but if I have to pick between the Empire and the Stormcloaks, I'd rather choose the side that doesn't want me dead or exiled. And you're willing to fight what looked to me like a very accomplished Morag Tong assassin and THE Dragonborn on the off chance that they don't come to their senses. Aye, ah, son. That's what I've been saying. And why do you keep calling me son? It's just my dialect. That's what Moden called a few of us younger men when we were fresh faces in the guard, so I just picked it up. I'll catch it if it bothers you. It bothered me for a while, too, if I'm being honest. Not like Lad is much better, though. Ah, well. No, you're right. Far be it from me to stop you from being your usual curmudgeonly self. Oh, and what about you, Cactus? You sign with the Empire? Not on your life. Or, well, let me rephrase that. I don't exactly enjoy being on the receiving end of someone else's chain of command, so to speak. So I will not be joining the Legion, if that's what you're asking. 
I will also not be joining, aiding, abetting, or otherwise engaging in any helpful way with the Stormcloaks, because they can all suck scribs as far as I'm concerned. Huh. After all that you said about not wanting Soul to join them, you're not gonna join us. Whether or not I help the two of you has nothing to do with me wearing an Imperial Battle Mage's uniform. I'll happily zap a few Stormcloaks here and there, I just won't be doing it under anyone else's command. Besides, I'm sure I can be useful in other ways. I suppose that works. What do you mean, other ways? Well, I've been working on a spell. Or, working on mastering it anyway. Mark and Recall. It's a bit finicky and old-fashioned as far as magic goes, but I've been practicing. I could, say, put a mark on Spellbreaker there, and teleport to Sol after I drop off Enna. Should probably put a mark on her, too, just in case. I'm right here. And who's Spellbreaker? Soul's shield. It's got a few quirks. So, you're saying I oh, like you're gonna take her back to the Reach on your own? That doesn't sound like a good idea. For all sorts of reasons, not the least of which being safety in numbers. On the one hand, yes. On the other, safety in being able to recall at a moment's notice if anyone decides to attack me. I'm hoping Enna overhearing this whole conversation will give her an appreciation for how incredibly foolish it would be to try anything, lest I drop some kind of magic storm on them and poof away. Besides, I think she and I could find plenty to talk about on our way. You know how you keep saying that Tilvani folk are suspicious? Well, you're screaming suspicious right now. <sighs> I see, this is what I get for trying to be responsible for once. I solemnly swear I'm doing this for three reasons. Morbid curiosity, keeping you out of the way of anything that could make your ribs worse, and maybe a bit of spite aimed at whoever was running... What was it? That mine in Markarth? Sidna Mine. You're actually genuine about that. Why would you hate the Silverbloods if they've done nothing to you? It's the principle. Now, will you let me put a mark on Spellbreaker or not? I will. However, you're only taking Inna as far as you need to let her reassure her people that she didn't die trying to deal with Ulfric. After that, you're bringing her and yourself right back here. Understood? What? Why? Two reasons. One, I don't trust you not to go try again the moment we turn our backs. Two... It'll be good for you one way or another to see how the Legion works. Your choice, whether it's knowing your enemy, or making yourself a known ally for the future. You're seriously helping this girl. What happened to protecting your people? I'm protecting them by keeping her out of trouble. As best I can. I can't do much with the rest of the Force Swarm, but that's not my responsibility. It's hers. I'm hoping she'll learn something if she sticks around us long enough. And if I refuse... You think the lizard could make me come back? I could, actually. But you'd hate me for it. I'd recommend not forcing my hand. Or my spells, rather. Is it any worse than getting punched in the gut by an assassin? Much. Telvani trickery? Well, <laughs> not exactly, but I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Maybe I'll demonstrate on someone else while we're in the Reach. Fine, you're not bluffing, I don't think. Just give me long enough to get my good armor back from where I stored it and I'll stay with you. But if you lay a finger on me, I wouldn't dream of it. I don't want to get dog furs stuck in my scales. Hey, I think you're in good hands with him, Emma. Alright, make your mark, Cactus. Be careful. Bring her back and then come find me. Works for me. And I'll be more careful than to go around provoking werewolves, at least. You say that now, but if I go hunting while you're with me, I expect you to keep your damn lightning to yourself. I don't hold much hope for you doing the same with your comments. Unless you attack me first, consider me not a threat, except possibly to your sanity. Not much I can do about that one. This is going to be a headache. Alright, let's go make sure my people don't try to skin you. That is a bad idea, letting those two wander. Oh, I Want me to tail him while you poke around Castle Dower? No, I trust him. I think. 
I suddenly feel about Moden's age, though. Come on, let's go see what this half of the province is like. Status. Asset. Uncooperative. Dormant. Emissary level approval. If that's all we have to go on, that can mean any number of things. I assume there's more. There is. Remember what I said about the Nords and Imperials exhausting their resources? This is where I got that idea. In the background section, he apparently came to their attention as an asset, having been captured and interrogated in the Great War. Does it say by whom? First Emissary Elinwyn. I had the pleasure of meeting her at the Embassy. She seems to be under a bit of pressure. <laughs> Good. I haven't met her personally, but Jarl Ulfric has my sympathies. Four more interrogations are... Well... I imagine she could have gotten him to say or do whatever she wanted. As lucky as I was to be a young, well-off Ultima Scholar when I was being investigated for heresy, I can't imagine they were more gentle-handed with him, being a Nord and a soldier. Are you alright? That depends entirely on how you define alright. This isn't making it harder for me, if that's what you're asking. Go on. That is a bit of a relief, yes. Let's see. Well, they duped him before they let him escape. Let him escape? Is that a direct quote? Nearly. Quote, He was made to believe information obtained during his interrogation was crucial to the capture of the Imperial City. The city had in fact fallen before he'd been broken and then allowed to escape." End quote. It looks like they also established contact with him at some point after the war. I remembered the Markarth incident being valuable to them, which it says here, but not that part. It also says he's become, quote, generally uncooperative to direct contact. To what end? Keep going. Quote, in general, the ascent should be considered dormant. Any ideas? Not without more context. All right. Well, they want the war to remain indecisive, thus the resources idea. Apparently, there was some sort of incident at Helgen, wherein Ulfric was nearly executed, but a dragon intervened before they could. Ah, that explains why people were going on about dragons before we ever faced one. And a reminder of things that we're both getting distracted from. I think... This is rather an important distraction to deal with, for both of us. My father did send me here to win over a few of the Arls. I can, unfortunately, see no better way of doing that here than... I'll deal with that thought later. Arguably far more importantly, I doubt the Arl of Widerun will allow anyone to do anything untoward with his keep until the bickering around him is settled. Anything untoward. <laughs> I'll dig that thought of yours up in a bit, but I suspect I know where you were going with it. But I also suspect there may be more in that dossier to go over. Unfortunately, that's about all we have to go on. The part about the dragon was mostly of interest to Delphine. An Imperial or Stormcloak victory is to be avoided. That's all the context we have from this source, at least. Enna knows something we don't about the Markarth incident, but I'm not sure how we'd find out around here. Agreed, though I'd hope the Nords are a bit more lax about what they let people read than, say, the Thalmor are. If they are, we might find something about whatever happened there. You're wondering about the word asset specifically, I take it. You read my mind. It would be too easy to read that as puppet which is a phrase I've heard thrown around all too often about the Empire. Whether or not that turns out to be projection on their part remains to be seen, I think, but I'd rather hear your thoughts on it. Not to put you on the spot, but you do rather present a rare opportunity of someone to ask about it who's been on the inside. Sort of. I was never one to kiss up to the cannon reeves, as it were, and now I'm kicking myself for it a bit, but I do have some insight here. Given the context, it's not likely he's a spy. 
He's not from inside the Old Mary Dominion. And I don't think he's necessarily working for Ellenwyn directly, in spite of them letting him escape. More likely, given his status as uncooperative and dormant. I think he's doing exactly what Enna is doing. Working in ways that are indirectly beneficial to the Thalmor. In this case, stirring up a rebellion in defense of Talos. Uncooperative likely refers to the fact that getting anywhere near him in a Thalmor uniform is likely to end up with an Altma head on the ground, and... I suspect they used the word dormant because they could, if they were pressed, manage to lure him into doing something else for them. Although, do you have any other dossiers we could compare this to? As a matter of fact, I do. I was thinking the same thing, at least about what asset means. Interesting. I have two more here, on Delphine and Esben. How much do you want to know? Just the status listings. Esben. Status fugitive. Capture only. Highest priority. Emissary level approval. Delphine. Status active. Capture or kill. High priority. Emiss- Wait. Active what? That's all it says. Just active. You would think they'd have her listed as a fugitive as well, wouldn't you? That... Strikes me as only more ominous than Ulfric's status. It does. Although when it's followed by capture or kill, it makes me wonder if she's an active threat rather than simply on the run. Let's go with that for now. I'd rather not think about any alternatives just yet. Agreed. Alright, so they make the distinction between the type of file in the first section, and the second is a priority marker. Oh. Dormant means no priority. They know where he is and what he's doing, as in they don't have to spare any resources toward trying to keep track of him. They're not hunting him down because he's an asset and is not to be contacted directly. I imagine if that ever changed, his status, should they have copies of this, which I assume they do, would likely be marked the same as Delphine's. Oh... Well, that's significantly less sinister than the way I was reading it. Then again... Well, you know who I work with. Dormant asset is the sort of language we might use to describe a sleeper agent. Those are real. I did say might. So, speaking of which... About that thought I stowed away for later. You know why my father sent me here. I don't think he intended for me to join the Stormcloaks, but there's no better way to get into Ulfric's good graces. Your leave is another matter. So, given what we've just read in that dossier, and other than the Nords disliking outsiders in the extreme, I don't see why we shouldn't. They aren't all that different from most of Morrowind from what I've read. You're actually considering it. Well, I can safely say I didn't see that one coming. Myth, I was exiled specifically for defending the concept of Talos ascending. Of course I'd fight for the Stormcloaks. Especially if the Thalmor are as deeply entrenched into the Empire as I think they are. I'm sure Atlug believes what she said, but I don't think she's a reputable source of information, exactly. Why are they so upset about that damn Talos thing, anyway? Not the Nords. Them, I understand. I mean the Thalmor. Oh, there are layers to it. And they aren't exactly easily separable layers either. Do you want to start with a shallow layer and work in, or start with the deepest one and work out? Well, now I'm curious. And I suspect the outer layers will be easier to explain with deeper knowledge. I knew I liked you. So, traditionalist Altma view themselves as literally the descendants of the Aedra, thus why they're called the Aedra, our ancestors. They believe that through the pursuit of perfection, one might ascend back to the ranks of the Aedra like Xarxes did. It's called the Path to Alaxan. Traditionalists take it very seriously and very literally, so some man, not Mer, casually ascending to godhood after only a man's lifetime of not actively trying, rather than several hundred years of concerted effort, is, to put it extremely lightly, a slap in the face. And that's not even considering his utterly horrendous, if sometimes exaggerated, 
acts when he went about conquering Tavriel and establishing the Empire. Restraint is not a word I would have used to describe anything about the Imperial Legion, considering its roots. If Talos is a god, he is absolutely a war god. <laughs> I didn't catch that, but you make an excellent point. I take it you're not exactly a traditionalist yourself, then. Not on your life. Perfection isn't something that can be achieved, even with an Altma's lifespan. A more reasonable, in my view, reading of that whole concept is to strive to be better. Achieve great things, certainly, but do so whilst improving yourself, your morals, your crafts, all of that. It's not a set goal that one should be punished for failing to live up to. Whether the traditionalists like it or not, we are not gods, and barring some extraordinary circumstances, we aren't meant to be. We are not inherently better than anyone else anywhere in Tamriel. If we are the children of the Aedra, then frankly so is everyone else that walks Nern, aside from potentially the Argonians. But that doesn't make them lesser, just different. There is... So much metaphor that can be read in the old texts, it's just... <sighs> it's never been enough for me to take any of it at surface level. It's sort of my own personal path to Alaxan, striving to seek out the truth in some of these old ideas that the Thalmor have taken and twisted into barbed shackles over the whole Dominion. I've always thought, it doesn't have to be some grand undertaking. Aspiring to regain our immortality or some nonsense. A step down the path to Alaxan can be as simple as stopping to admire a flower growing in a difficult spot and praising it for its resilience. That was... oddly touching. And also, I think, the most I've ever heard about Altma society that wasn't some Nord shouting about witch elves. It explains a great deal. About you and the Embassy, oddly enough. It's all too easy for me to understand how something like that could become a mountain sitting on your shoulders. I take it that hit a bit close to home? Something about not punishing people for failing to live up to unreasonable expectations. It's a nice thought. Though I have to say... Perfection is a very large gulf of unreasonable away from what was ever expected of me if I stopped to think about it. Doesn't mean it hurts any less. We were talking about Talos. Distraction? If you wouldn't mind. Fair enough. So, that's the deep layer. That Talos being a god is basically an insult to the entirety of the traditional Old Mary way of life. Which I, quite frankly, don't think is a bad thing. I think we have a lot of traditions that need a bit more scrutiny applied to them. Which is why I was exiled for heresy. Exiled and worse. I know the Thorn were levels of cruel I can't possibly fathom, but I did figure you'd done something a bit beyond just... defending the idea of some Nord deity to them. It's enough of an affront just to do that, unfortunately. Which is the other very large layer. Control. It's the whole thing. Control and power. Outlawing Talos and the White Gold Concord, it wasn't just something they did out of spite. They did it because they knew, someone knew, they must have, that someone wouldn't take kindly to it. Likely someone from Skyrim. And if they just let Ulfric escape, I think Elinwyn knew he'd take the bait. You think they manipulated him into starting a war? No. Not specifically. I think it's a little more complicated than that, and that they didn't actually expect a war out of it. I think they wanted to use something like this as an excuse to dig their claws into Skyrim, and the fact that Ulfric is fighting the Empire is just something they're capitalizing on. I suspect they'll try to get eyes on the Reach now, too, if they haven't already. Keep that situation as chaotic as possible. Any other layers I should know about? This is more tangled than I expected. Does it need more layers? I think I've covered the big ones. Undoubtedly, they also just did it to prove that they could. A power grab. No, I think that's... far more than I expected. You did ask. And honestly, I'm glad that you did. It was a good reminder to me of... well, a lot of things, really. 
your own personal path to Alaxan. That sounds very different when you say it. It also just occurred to me that you are in fact a Dunmer and sort of more daedric leaning than I'm used to. Indeed, though I'm not especially devout. Thus my ongoing confusion about my mother's... bouts of prophecy. Less confusion now. Oh, well. Not less. Just transferred to different topics, unfortunately. If you need me to shine some sort of light on it, I'd be happy to listen. After all, you did just get me passionately ranting about all sorts of things. I think I enjoy your passionate ranting, Sira. And you do seem to be adept at unraveling layers which I find myself tangled in. I'd say start at the deepest one, but I have a feeling you're not quite ready to trust me with that yet, so... Perhaps start with the most relevant instead? Something about the idea of helping the Stormcloaks doesn't seem to be sitting right with you. Gods. You're... You certainly know how to make me feel like I can trust you with things. Oddly enough, I don't have as much to hide as one might think. Beyond some business matters, obviously. You know I don't exactly have the best relationship with either of my parents, which is also something I'm getting a handle on as we speak, so that's about the worst of it. Which is somewhat relevant. I'm just... struggling to pass it out, I think. How so? It seems straightforward to me. Your father sent you to do a job, and I would complicate you doing that job if I indeed wanted to side with the Imperials, which I'd rather not, if for no other reason than my general aversion to that whole half of the province, given how close it is to the Embassy. No, that part is very straightforward and understandable. It's... oddly complicated from the other direction. I don't... want to fight. Or rather, I don't want to be beholden to my father anymore. I think that's why I've been struggling to write back as well. Yes, I could say I'm doing this for the Tong. To some extent, I am. And to a far greater extent, I'm lying to myself. Oh. You don't want to do this because he sent you to do it. Exactly. And now, I have a brother that I never knew existed, but perhaps should have. My parents have both mentioned Ashadan Farain as just my mother's first engagement, as it were. Long gone. I never thought much of it, other than being somewhat amused that she'd have gone from courting an Ashlander guard to courting my father of all people. And now... I don't really know what to think of it. I don't even really know why I asked, I just had to know. That's a good enough reason in and of itself, I think. And you didn't expect him to say yes. True. And he's very much House Redoran. He's stubborn. He said he'd rather not choose the Nords, and I believe him. Him being my brother aside, I'm mostly conflicted about this because I don't want to find myself on the other side of a battlefield from him. He's not using the normal Ritterin kit, but we both saw his hands. I don't think he can, so I'm at least not worried about navigating his sword skills, but you're scared of him. Terrified. The handful of Ritterin guard that got sent to Raven Rock initially were among the best at what they do, and Captain Moden Veleth was the best of them. Sol von der Ferrein is a career soldier that was trained for battle by a legend. With 86 years of experience, I would be a fool not to be scared of him, whether or not he can still wield a sword. And yet, he misjudged himself and got mauled by a werewolf for his trouble. How do you think his hands got so scarred up in the first place? I'd imagine the same sort of way, walking into a situation that he thought he had a handle on and being completely out of his depth. Don't be scared of him. You make an excellent point. But... He also appears to be working with the surprisingly level-headed Captain Atlug, who may very well get him to rein in whatever made him do that. Besides, if I don't fear him, I'll start to fear for him. 
And that's not the sort of thing you want to do if you're likely to end up fighting someone. Well, then don't assume we'll end up fighting him. We are joining the Stormcloaks, aren't we? This... all of this was just to ease your misgivings about it. I suppose it was. I still... I don't want to do this for my father. Maybe the Tong, but... I can't imagine anyone there that I do this for would want me to wade into a war, armed with a bow and a pair of daggers. And a dragonborn. They see a dragonborn. I see a flower blooming in adversity. I'll do this for you. And coincidentally, for my father and the Tong. This, of course, all depends on whether or not Ulfric will actually let us join the Stormcloaks. I suppose if they don't, the quickest way to put an end to this is, in fact, do what I very much don't want to do and join the Legion. If it comes to that, we at least won't have to worry about your brother, who I swear I'll stop pestering you to think about at some point. You will not. But I don't mind. And one more thing. Oh? I apologize for scaring you when I disarmed Enna, and threatened her. Uh, I was not exactly... <laughs> Apology accepted regardless. Oh dear. Don't. I made you swoon over my waxing poetic about philosophy. Or even. Fair enough. Come on, let's go let your leave know what happened at least. Before I lose my nerve. Algriff won't give us a straight answer. He's a true Nord. He'll come around. Don't be so sure of that. We've intercepted couriers from Solitude. The Empire's putting a great deal of pressure on White Run. And what would you have me do? If he's not with us, he's against us. He knows that. They all know that. How long are you going to wait? You think I need to send Balgraf a stronger message? If by message you mean shoving a sword through his gullet. Oh. Taking his city Dear. and leaving him in disgrace would make a more powerful statement, don't you think? So we're ready to start this war in earnest then? Soon. I still say you should take them all out like you did dead King Torig. It's not... Torig was merely a message to the other Jarls. Whoever we replace them with will need the support of our armies. We're ready when you are. Things hinge on White Run. If we can take the city without bloodshed, all the better. But if not, the people are behind you. Many, I fear, still need convincing. Then let them die with their false kings. We've been soldiers a long time. We know the price of freedom. But people are still weighing things in their hearts. What's left of Skyrim to wager? Um, they have excuse families me? to think of. How many of their sons and daughters follow your banner? We are their families. Well put, friend. Tell me, Gotmar, why do you fight for me? I'd follow you into the depths of oblivion. You know that. Yes, but uh, why do you fight? If not for me, what then? I'll die before elves dictate the fates of men. Are we not one in this? Well, I feel I a bit out of place. I fight for the men I've held in my arms. Dying on foreign soil. I fight for their wives and children whose names I heard whispered in their last breath. I fight for we few who did come home, only to find our country full of strangers wearing familiar faces. I fight for my people, impoverished to pay the debts of an empire too weak to rule them, yet brands them criminals for wanting to rule themselves. I fight so that all the fighting I've already done hasn't been for nothing. I fight. Because I must. Your words give voice to what we all feel, Ulfric. And that's why you will be High King. But the day words are enough will be the day when soldiers like us are no longer needed. I will gladly retire from the world. Were such a day to dawn. Aye. But in the meantime, we have a war to plan. Sir, there continues to be unrest in the Grey Quarter. Blasted Dark Elves. 
I don't suppose you could tell them that I presently have larger concerns, such as all of Skyrim. They don't seem to be very sympathetic to our cause, sir. Well... Let me know if you hear anything more substantial. Of course, my lord. It would seem we got here just in time. So it would seem. You're going to just walk up and talk to the Jarl. Ah, uh, well. Tim or Galmar, I suppose. At least your leaf knows both of us. Well, might as well. I'll follow you. You know I will. Oh dear. Jarl Ulfric. Only the foolish or the courageous approach a Jarl without summons. Well, I may be both. But a fool would have joined the Empire. A fair point. Well, you've come to the right place then. Speak with Galmar. I will. Good. Well, that was... not what I was expecting. You were expecting more resistance? Um... Maybe a bit. Uh, the question, of course, is... Where is Galmar? Uh, well, there's a man here. I don't know if he's actually Galmar or not. Think you might be in the wrong place, friend. Uh-huh. I'm here to join the Stormcloaks, actually, but... Ah, uh, there he is. Divines watch over you. And also you. Uh, where... Uh... This is going to be interesting, given the state of my eyes. He's right across the table here. Thank you. Uh, Galma. Are you ready for Serpentstone Island? Am I ready for what? It's where men have tested their metal for ages. It's a strange rock formation built by the ancients. Something about that place attracts the ice wraiths. You kill an ice wraith out there, and I'll have all the proof I need about you. Your leaf. I want you well, to send a messenger to our western camps. That sounds and easy enough, set. actually. I'll have to kill that ice wraith. We'll see about that, <laughs> won't we? It will work <laughs> if we can pull Haran's men from the south and find a bit of luck. All right. Away we go. Of course, there's going to be the whole running into doors issue. Would you like to talk to your leaf while we're here? Uh, yes, given that that is what we came here for. Also, thank you for doing the talking. Very brave of you, also, given. Uh huh. Oh no, trust me, I'm feeling the courage right now. Where's your leaf? Just keep going straight. Um, you're around here somewhere. I'm not much of a strategist, but Lord Ulfric listens to my counsel all the same. Right. So, about that Forsworn that you were worried about? <laughs> <laughs>